Hi everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to another great edition of Astronomy for Beginners and today I'm going to do a DIY guide. Now, for most of us, as you probably find on the internet, um, you probably find that you find guys for telescopes, really expensive telescopes, and you always be wondering when you transport a, a telescope, so like you're moving home to house to house, or you're taking to a dark site area, you probably find that um, you won't really, if you're forking out a lot of money for a telescope, all right, you want to protect it, you want to stop it from getting damaged, and, uh, and so forth. Now, you probably find out that you've looked at um, your internet, and you've probably looked at your telescope, and there's a telescope case you can buy. All right, fantastic. They protect your investment, all right, and they do the job. Keep it from dust and, and the moisture and so forth. However, guess what? They are extremely expensive. Um, believe it or not, for this reflector here, there is a telescope box out there which you can get, which is the Mead NS8 and the NS10, which is a really old short focus reflector case. It's, it's done by Jimmy Eye. Right? It's a really good branded case, don't get me wrong, but when I looked at it, it's 468 euros for the case. Really, really expensive. Don't get me wrong, Jimmy I is a fantastic company, all right, and they offer some fantastic cases. But for me, it's out of my pocket. So, today's guide, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, how, how to build a case for yourself. Now, a DIY case can go a lot further, right, and you can save a lot of money, all right. I'm building this case, it's going to cost me between 50, maybe 60 euros to make. That's a damn sight better, all right. Bear in mind, this is going to be a hard case, so, because obviously, I will be moving house soon or later, and I want to protect one of my telescopes, so when we do move, it's not going to damage it in any, any other way. So, basically what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step guide, I'm going to show you a variety of equipment you're going to use, and I'm going to show you how, to, where, what to measure. Because obviously when you want to build a case, you're going to make sure, before you do anything, is draw some sketches, um, draw some measurements on there before you make that case, all right? Because it does cost you a bit of money to make it. Bear in mind, you can make this case out of scrap metal, out of scrap wood, and so forth. This case is going to be made out of wood, all right? And basically, I'm going to show you what to do step by step. Bear in mind, for you guys of DIY experts, probably know a lot better than me. This is only my idea. Alright, some of you guys are probably so I can make that even better. But believe me, I'm trying to aim it for the guys who have not got a limited bit of uh, DIY expertise. Obviously, you've got tools and all that that can be, you should have in the home. Alright, if you're not, borrow some. Alright, so obviously this is aimed at for guys in general. But for all the DIY experts, you might have better ideas. But again, there's no harm to have a look and watch. All right, and basically I'm sharing the ideas to you guys, all right? So, obviously, we're going to go over, I'm going to show you the equipment I'm going to use, and then what, what I'm going to do, and then we're going to go step by step, little bit by guide, across, show you how to build a case for yourself. So, as you see, we'll move on. Right, guys. Before you start making your uh, telescope case, there's a, a set of few things you need to acquire. Now, <clears throat> here we have a, a, a normal refractor telescope, a typical refractor. All right, and when you're going to make your case, you've got to consider a few dimensions. First off, you've got to think about the actual length of this telescope. Now, obviously, um, you want to make the telescope case as reasonably small so that you can make it compact make the case you know compact easy to store um, bear in mind with the length 
Uh, this is a typical uh, ED doublet apple, and with this, the the actual dew shield here is actually extended all the way down to make it compact as as possible. So you want to use um, you know you make you need to make the telescope as compact as you can, so you use less material and makes the makes it cheaper for you. Obviously um, you've also got to think about the diameter so obviously the thickness of the box is also determined on the diameter of the telescope. Now that's basically just on the, the refractor. For the reflector you've still got to consider uh, the diameter but also you've got to think about the actual width from the focuser because the focuser will add the actual width of the the box and <clears throat> if you're going to leave any attachments like a guy scope for example it will also make your um, your box even bigger so you the, the certain things you've got to think about when you design your box the equipment you're going to require is um, first off you're going to need uh, like a long straight hedge quite long a tape measure an engineer square and also something to mark with like a pencil then you're going to need a, a power drill or an, a series of drill bits of various uh, sizes then you're going to think about um, ways of cutting your material Obviously, I'm making my box out of wood, so I'll be requiring wood saws and the jigsaw and all that. Then you're going to think about um, what adhesive you're going to use, like glue you're going to use. For me, I'm going to use like a very extreme um, um, glue that's quite hot, you know, quite strong, and I'm going to use the normal um, wood glue as well. Then you're going to require screwdrivers, a flat point, and two, you know, a cross point screwdrivers. Then you're going to think about a series of fixings of screws, wood screws, uh, different sizes from 3.5 to 5 mil, depending on what you want to design your box. So you're going to need require some certain screws. Then you're going to think about the wood. Obviously, this I just cannot uh, define how much you want uh, on material you're going to use for the wood. So obviously, you're going to use wood. You could also overuse other materials, but I found wood being the cheapest option. It's quite rigid. It's it's strong, and <clears throat> and easily shaped and formed. So you you know it's idea to make this case out of wood. I'm going to use handles with mine. Or I'm going to use series of handles on my case. And um, I'm going to use wood dowels. Now, also, I'm going to use, uh, I'll, I'll explain later on why we use wood dowels. And of course, you're going to need a trusty hammer as well. Now, what we're going to start off now is basically you're going to get our dimensions. It is very crucial that you get as much as the measurements as you can. Now, I also got me 8 inch quattro on the table now. And basically, what I'm going to do is um, Obviously I'm going to make my box in a way so that there's no attachments attached to it. I remove all the attachments. It's just basically just purely going to seal the main tube for the box. Um, obviously be aware, it just depends on, um, on your style. If you want to have the telescope already set up with all the stuff and all that. But it just means you're going to use more material. You're going to have to make the box bigger and so forth. For me, I'm just doing a box for this scope with no attachments. First off, what we're going to do is just take off any outstanding coma correctors or tele extenders and all that. And basically, I'm just going to use just a, um, a 1.25 adapter. Alright, so remove any coma correctors and things out of the way. This is basically how the telescope is going to get laid into the box alright so basically um, get a piece of paper and pencil in hand and get a tape measure very crucial uh, have you noticed I've left the, the dust cap on 
because obviously I want my dust cap to be in place. All right, you always leave the dust cap in there when the telescope's not in use. All right. So basically, I'm going to measure across first thing first the diameter. So basically, I'm going to measure across and okay, it's around about 200. 230. Alright, 230 in the diameter. So you put the diameter 230. Then the second bit, now this is a bit iffy. Obviously the focus sticks out a bit, so it also adds the width of your box. So obviously um, you'll have to somehow try to measure it up by some, some means. Now it is quite difficult. So, so what I do is I use some kind of straight edge or something to measure it across. This is tricky. So I've got like a straight edge here to the side of the box. All right. And I'll put a straight edge across there. Now, obviously, it's not quite right. It's giving me around about 82. 82 uh, millimeters sticking out. And then I'll measure the lengthwise. Now obviously I've got a straight edge long enough. So measure across from here, like so. Now always measure right to the end of where the screws are as well. Right, and that basically give me 730 centimetres. So the length is 730 millimeters. All right, that gives you the uh, dimensions, of rough dimensions, of the telescope. Now, what I'm going to do is, is obviously you're going to add 10 millimeters on each of the values. All right, the reason for that is, say like 230 diameter, and then you add the focus length as well. All right, so you've got to add that together. Alright, so basically that's 230 and then you add the 82. So 322 is giving me the, uh, the total width. Alright, basically in theory what you're going to do is you're going to add uh, 10, uh, obviously 20. Alright, I'm going to do it as 20 because basically inside my, uh, inside my box I need to add uh, foam inside, so basically I'm going to add a bit of uh, room so that it's just enough to, uh, for the foam to just fit in there. So basically I'm going to uh, add 20, an extra 20 in there, which gives me 342 centimeters either way. Now the length is simple, all I do is just add 20 millimeters, will give me 750 uh, millimeters in total length. Alright, so that gives me a sort of length there for the inside of the box. Obviously, you don't need to be absolutely spot on, all right? There's no reason to be spot on, but as long as you're over, it's better to be over than under, all right? So make sure you go over the value of the actual scope itself. Now, everyone's got a different technique, all right? But mine is just basically going to be the telescope fit inside that box, and that's it. So I would say I need a little bit of um, a little bit of space so that I can put my phone in. Uh, this is my wood. I'm going to show you uh, the bits of the wood I've demanded, um, which I'm going to use. Now, obviously, this is already pre cut. Luckily for me, it's all a certain set size. Alright, and um, basically, I'm using two 800 by 400 millimeter uh, and 16 millimeter thick wood, pure wood. All right, so I've got two, two of these. All right, two of these. All right. Then I've got 800 by 300. Now it just depends on your 
on how you want your star your box. All right, so I've got two of these, 800 by 300 by 16, and the main one for the ends is I've got a 1200 by 400 uh, 16 millimeter, and this basically is going to form the the ends. All right. Basically, I'm going to make this box of a of a butt joint. Um, basically, it's a simple um, sort of join to, to join the the wood together. But the thing is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install dowels at each of the ends. All right, with six millimeter dowels. All right, and then I'm going to glue it together and then screw it on with wood screws. All right, simple design and it is quite strong. Basically what I've done is I basically laid the telescope on top of the wood. All right, it's always the best good idea when you first get your wood is to check I mean uh, if your dimensions are correct. Now obviously there's plenty of room. Obviously this this wood here is the is the 400 millimeter by 800 long uh, wood all right so that's going to be the base all right and these are the two 300s all right two 300s either side all right now you can see here it's obviously because I've done it as a book joint all right I've not put it together yet but you see where I've I've put in my sort of uh, my structure obviously these are going to be held in with the dowels and it's going to be glued and it's going to be screwed in there all right so it's going to be quite strong also it's given me uh, plenty of um, room all right so I can install um, my uh, my foam inside all right so it gives me a little bit of room all right there's plenty of room for the cap and at the ends all right so you think to yourself well it looks a bit too big for the box but believe me it's it's perfect because that's exactly what I want because then I can install um, some of my foam here and here and so forth all right and that's how I want my telescope to lay all right obviously at the bottom there's going to be loads of foam at the bottom all right so I'm going to have the foam at the bottom as well all right but it's a good idea well, I mean once you've got your wood um, measurements um, this should should work perfectly. Now, obviously, if it's um, a little bit too long and all that, you're going to have to cut the wood, cut the wood down, and so forth. All right. So just take your time. All right. Get the measurements right. And for me, luckily for me, I've got my measurements how I want it. All right. So I can basically uh, come just crack on straight from there. All right. So it's really crucial you get your measurements right. All right. Because you don't want to be wasting money. All right. You want to save money. Right, then I'm going to mark out the sides. This is the side piece. All right. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark um, the dowels. Now, using a, a engineer square, all right, you're going to mark around about 10 millimeter here, or 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters here, and then 20 centimeters here. All right, to mark that side, yeah. All right, and then. Using the engineer square, you're basically going to mark a line across. Okay, that line there, and that line there, and then you're going to do the same on the other side. Okay, from the inside, you mark out 10. There's 10, and then mark out 20, that's 20 there. Again, use an engineer square across from here, right? Just mark out uh, a line here, and then your line here, all right? And then you're gonna mark out, because uh, it's 16 mil, you're going to mark out from the edge from here, okay, from the edge from here, alright, you're going to mark out, um, 16 mil, so basically you want to half that to 8, so, so that's mark my line here, and basically I'm going to mark, I'm going to mark my line, 
right from here using the engineer straight just mark my position here do the same again from here That's mark my position here for the holes there. For the dolls, as you can see here, that's marked out my holes. And then you do the same for the other side. Alright, you can have as many dolls as you want, but four will be enough. So I'll have one dial here, one dial here, dial, dial here, and so forth. Basically, now you're going to do the same, exactly the same, to the uh, to the main base. Okay, and now I'm going to mark uh, my centre line. So basically, you see from here, I'm going to mark my centre line with my straight edge across. All right. Basically, that's eight mil apart. So basically, I'm going to mark my centre line from there. Alright, so I've marked where the eight mil is going to be. Just about going to be here. This is going to be my centre line. And then I'm going to mark my centre line and go across like so. Nice and lightly. Alright, and then you do this do the same on the other side. Okay, I've just marked my center lines from the base, right? And either side. Okay. So basically I'm going to use the use the outer outer um use the outer uh, wall and basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna make sure you line that up so that just to make sure that when those centre holes are lined up they are perfectly within the centres with that so basically you're going to line that up like so ok so there you go there's a the centre line here there's your centre lines here, centre line here alright so now I'm happy that those centre lines are lined up so basically when I put drill the holes either side of these all right they will line up with the dowels and then I can uh, do the rest get one of your side walls all right once you've marked everything also get yourself a power drill all right with a 5.5 millimeter diameter drill bit using uh, a 2 mil drill bit or something like that or one you know 2 mil drill bit you can if you want to get the sensors spot on all right Use a, a pilot hole first. Obviously, get someone to uh, give you a hand with this, alright? But if you're quite good, like me, you just uh, you don't need any assistance. But basically, you're just going to okay. stop putting the pilot drills in there. Now, obviously, if you can't put the dials back in there, all right, 
you can always hammer it in. Alright, so. Now, obviously, if you can't get them out, you can always use a pair of pliers. Alright, use a pair of pliers because that will help. If you use a pair of pliers. Alright, if you can't get them, if you're not deep enough, alright, just keep drilling back bit by bit. Now, obviously, if you've got all of these uh, these long devices, the, it's like a depth gauge. Basically, you can go so much down, so you ain't gonna go past. Look, I, I, obviously, I don't know where my mine is, so I managed to use halfway. So, clean it up again. Check with the dials. Now, that's what you're looking for. These dials here, right? They're going to form the base at the bottom. You're going to do the same where you've marked out those drill bits here. You're going to do exactly the same, right? But first thing first, before you start putting the holes in there, all right? Just double check, see if that it will fit, okay? Yeah, there you go, I'm happy to do that. They fit. And now basically you're going to do the exactly the same. Exactly the same from here. Alright. And you're going to carefully, now obviously don't use, don't do this on your best table. Alright. Don't do it on your best table. Or just use a work table or, a, or something like that. Put your pilot holes in. Pilot holes in there, right? Nice and easy. Now don't drill too deep, all right? Don't drill too deep, otherwise you'll go straight through the wood and then causing yourself problems, all right? So don't drill too deep, all right? Basically, these are just line dowels, okay? Alright, that's your pilot marked, holes marked. And then we'll go back to your 6mm drill bit. Okay, 6mm drill bit. Again, do the same again, nice and easy. Not too much. You will be very careful not to drill past to the bottom. You can easily do so. Right. After that, you can quick shake or blow. Up. Now, obviously, you've got to use your. Um, be careful with, if if you're drilling, you need to wear safety goggles or something like that. So just be careful when you're drilling. All right. So. All right. And you just basically line up as it does. Now, basically, I've got my me, uh, me dowels in, alright, they're not overlapped, alright, because I've marked it out, alright, so basically, this is what you're looking for when you join it up. Okay, now once you've done all the dowels and all drilled in, you've got the base on the top and you've got your two sides, yeah. Right, it's looking coming on quite well, alright, and basically, what we're going to do is we're going to just put t a, a, a wood screw in the middle, basically, in the middle of here. Once I drill the hole, put the screw in there, and then take it off, and then we're going to glue it together. So basically what I'm going to do is now, I'm just going to mark out the hole, where it is. So you mark out the half of that, right, using your measurements, you can use a tape measure, or whatever, alright. I used to prefer to use a straight edge that basically from so you've got to make sure that you're halfway in the middle, otherwise what will happen is you have your screws protruding out of the out of the thing. So you've got to make sure you've marked out five, six, eight mil there, right? So basically you've got eight mil here. Okay, 8mm here, right? Very crucial that you get that centre. Alright, so you've got two marks here. 
Right, so you've got the two marks here, like so. Basically, you can either use a straight edge or a straight measure for a straight edge. Basically, you're going to line up the holes. the middle so there's 800 here so your middle is here so basically now I've got my mark here to where I can put my screw all right just there and then using the uh, straight edge all right you can actually measure across So, again, you still got to find out your end. If this is on, I mean, you don't have to clearly mark it, but it's a precaution because then when you do mark it, you know the screws aren't going to go on the sides. So, basically, use your straight edge. And that's my marks for the screws now. So basically now I know deep down that once I screw the mud screws in there, they're not going to miss off the the edge and then catch on the side. Alright, you don't want any screws protruding from there. Use a use a, a two mil drill bit or whatever. So it's very crucial you put a pilot hole in there. Alright, carefully. Nice and easily. Like so. And then you do the same for this side. Alright, nice and easy. Nice and square. Okay. What we're we'll doing now is we'll take well, the panel's off, nice and easy. Okay. So basically, what we're going to do, we're going to use some wood glue or extra strong wood glue, either way. Right. And basically, you're going to use some good wood glue. Okay. You don't need too much. Right. Basically, you spread that across. Once you've got a bit of glue on that side, put some in the dowel holes. There you go. Right, and basically what we're going to do now is put this wood glue together. This together. Like so. This is tight. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to get one of your wood screws. We're going to turn it round, okay, and we're going to screw that in there. Phillips screwdriver, good quality Phillips, alright. Basically, you're only going to use this uh, wood screw is to try and tighten it down and make sure that the uh, adhesive gets compact and, and forms a good bond. Okay, that's the only reason why we're doing this. It gets a bit tight. Take it apart. Alright, keep it in snap it. Alright. Now what I've done now is uh, I've waited for the glue to dry. Alright, and um, I've placed more of the screw uh, more of the screws. Basically I've placed six screws either side, okay, and it's looking quite strong. Obviously, it's not going to be as strong until I put the sides up on there. All right. Uh, the good thing about this is, if you get your measurements right, you can make it really easy for yourself. All right. So, basically, this longer piece that I've got of the 400 mil actually fits perfectly 
at the sides and all I have to do is once I've lined it all up like so all right I only have to just draw a line here okay like so and that basically gives me uh, one of the sides all right and I've got a perfect square, right? So basically now I can jigsaw this piece here to form my sides. With this straight line, all right. Basically, make sure you wear your goggles and safety goggles and your guard protection, all right. And we're going to cut across um, using the jigsaw. <laughs> there you go. Piece one cut. Basically what you're going to do now is you're going to use a bit of sandpaper and you're going to sand this down. Alright, you're going to sand this down alright, nice and straight. Alright, that's one piece of the end. Now we've just cut one of the sides, you basically want to uh, mark out some dowels. Now it's up to you if you want to put some dowels, but I like to put dowels because it really does it, uh, reinforce the, uh, the structure, makes it stronger. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to mark the halfway line between, uh, obviously, my spirit level alright and it also if you can't see that it's basically um, around about 15 centimeters alright from the from the top of the the 30 all the way down to the bottom so it's about halfway around there alright and then basically what you do is um, you mark from the 8mm also using um, the engineer square alright marking it out okay 8mm from this end all right, and you go across along here to find the center line, which is 20, uh, 20 centimeters because it's 400 millimeters. All right, so yeah, 200 millimeters either way. All right, and you basically mark out your holes here where the dowels are going to be. Okay, and then there's so basically it's going to have three dowels at either side. All right, so basically what we're going to do now is I'm going to drill the the holes on the dowels like you see on the other instructions just just to bear in mind is is make sure you're also marked um, if you're doing the, the markings make sure you mark the, the actual box yourself alright from these marks here so when you line it up from there make sure you put make sure you put a line across there so that you can then do your markings for your where your dolls are going to be. Same for the top. All right, there's marks there, and then there's marks there. All right, very important. You need to make sure that those dolls line up. All right, in the box, so it's nice and rigid and nice and straight. Okay, once your pegs are in, all right. Basically, you know you're going to uh, assemble. Going to assemble uh, the end box. I've just put some glue on there just in case. Get it all lined up. And basically, I'm going to put in. Line it up like so. Now if it doesn't line up, a bit of a struggle to push it in. Just get yourself to have a you know a hammer and just tap it in. Right. It just tells you, you know, it's a nice tight fit. Right, nice and easy. Okay, nice and deep. And that's how that is. Nice and tight now. Alright, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put some screws now. Okay, and now I put one of the sides on, and I basically put, um, basically I put uh, six screws at either side. Alright, especially on the bottom where you need most of the strength. Alright, so the screws are in place, and uh, basically then, I've also glued from the inside, basically everything on the glue does a, like a waterproof layer, so that's the reason why I always like to put a smear of glue all the way across the joints and all that, so it keeps all, you know, once it's dried up there, it'll keep all the moisture out. After you put the, uh, the rear end with the dowels and then you screw it on the end, you should, your box should look like this. Well, I'm not going to um, 
put the telescope in to try it out. I was also just waiting for the glue to set in and take strength. I've given the, the box 24 hours to dry. Alright, and now it should be rock, rock solid now. You know. Before you start uh, prepping, preparing the, the, the wood for painting or varnishing, or depends on what you want to do. You either want to wood stain it or you want to paint it and all that. First off to do is get to the habit is before you start painting and treating the surface if you're putting the attachments like handles now you can you can fit handles if you want it's up to you all right and uh, basically these are the handles that I'm going to use stainless steel handles all right uh, you can get them from a lot of uh, DIY shops all right so basically you can you can fit handles if you wish all right on this box in particular I'm going to fit um, handles um, from the sides, so I'm going to have two handles at either side, like so. All right, and I'm going to have um, two handles here, so I can carry it out with both hands. All right, because it is quite a heavy scope. All right, around about nine to ten kilograms. The box at the moment weighs around about, I reckon, about two kilograms extra, but it is it is strong, it is rigid. All right, and that's what you're looking for. Um, basically, as you notice, before you uh, start prepping the coats, is I've marked out where I marked out the center center line for um, my dowels. Right, see the center line here. All right, that's basically what I used. I basically used my engineer's uh, engineer square, and basically I've lined up the center line across. All right, so it's bang on center. And then with the line across with the centre line, because this is 400 millimetres, mark out the the 200 millimetres, which is your dead end centre of the the width of the the side of the block of the of the box. And then basically what I did is I could, you see as I highlighted those uh, drill holes, I basically placed the 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 handle like so, and see where it's lined up there. All right, I basically marked up my areas for my box. Now, if you do the same for the other side, all right, you do the same for the other side. And if you want to fit handles on the on the bit, you can also do the exactly the same. Also, got my whole wall lined up, ready to go. All right, it's very important that you get all your uh, fixings marked out before you start treating the wood, all right, with paint or varnish or whatever. All right, so always to get into the habit of marking the areas. Now also on this bit I've marked out areas because this box believe it or not, I'm having it as a clamped lid so the lid's going to be separate. The lid's basically going to clamp with four of these brackets all right so I've marked out positions where these cl uh, clamps are going to be all right now I haven't drawn in the holes in as yet all right because basically what I'm trying to do is once I make the lid I need to check so that I can get the right sort of clamping because also I don't want it too slack and I don't want it too tight alright so I'm squashing the, the telescope so basically I need to get the, the tension just right so however I've marked out where my clamps are going to be where it's going to be situated now these, these positions here that I've marked out are basically 10 centimeters from each part right from each end like so they don't fix onto the the wood itself. They fix onto the uh, onto the uh, the lid. And is basically that's where my my clamps are going to go. All right. So, but I need to get the tension just right. All right. So, I've marked them where exactly where they're going to be. All right. And you see where the top, where the top lid's going to situate. All right. So. Basically, what I've done is um, I've not put in the holes. All right, I'm going to do that later. Now, obviously, this is going to be a separate lid. You can actually have um, you can actually have the lid uh, as separate, so you can have it hinged. All right, so you can have a hinge instead of just a separate lid. But for, to be honest with you, I prefer to have just the separate lid together. All right, so you can take it all out. Now with the hinge ones, the hinges can only go so far, all right? And basically, um, you have to uh, 
somehow leaving the telescope out. Me personally, I just like to take the entire lid off and it's easier, and then you just clip it back on with the clips. So, but that just depends on what you want to do, really. Alright, I mean, it just depends on your, your taste and your style or how you want it. Alright, end of the day, this is just a general idea to give you guys uh, what to do. Now, obviously, with this guy, this is basically if you've got a quattro, 8 inch quattro, or you've got a 200p. Uh, this will fit. Uh, bear in mind the 200p is longer. Is a longer telescope, so you need to check the tube dimensions. Obviously, this will fit perfectly for a quattro. All right, for an 8-inch quattro, regardless if it's a steel type or a carbon fiber type, it depends, right? But this will fit this this particular brand anyway. But for the 200p lot, if you've got 200p, the box will have to be longer. So basically, I've got the the box overall, and basically, I'm going to start drilling. Uh, the holes where they're going to be so bear with me on that okay I've just uh, I just finished off uh, drilling some of the holes all right so I've got my holes all marked out all right um, basically I'm just going to use um, M5 uh, wood screws all right and I'm basically drill like two and a half mil holes all right so I need plenty of clamping power for these handles so they need to be rigid so they're not going to be going in loose, so they'll be quite tight to screw them in alright, but that's what I want, I want a good strong bolt um, sort of firm grip, alright, so for the handles to be cool but basically I've got all my holes all now drilled out basically I'm going to make the top lid uh, I'm going to use a slightly longer wood it's still going to be 400 millimeters long alright, 60 millimeter thick um, I didn't want to go any any thicker, thicker wood because it would just make it the box even more heavier 16 millimeter seems to be ideal but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use cut this um, top this uh, this plank of wood for the top top lid right I've got the I've got the lid all right it's not cut yet the thing is alternatively you could uh, measure the size across using the long rule and then mark it off from that all right then um, bit of a lazy man trick basically if you've already made the box, why don't you just line up, get the box itself, alright, line it up to the edge, alright, so it's all flush, alright, so you've got, you've got a nice straight edge here, alright, like so, alright, it's a lazy way of doing it, alright, I know it is, but uh, it just makes things just a little bit easier, once you've got it all lined up, you've got your line here across, how you just do this, Like so. There you go, you got your line marked out already. So that's basically going to be your top lid already marked out. Alright, so a little, little trick. Alright, alternatively, you can just use the measurements and do it that way. Alright, so it's also going to be 800 millimetres. Add the 32, 832 millimetres to give you a size as well, and then use a straight edge like that. But obviously, uh, because my wood's already cut and it's straight, I know it's straight, then I don't need to uh, use the engineer square to make it sure it's lined up. But that ain't basically my straight edge. Basically, now what I'm doing is going to use a jigsaw and I'm going to cut across that line. Cut across, right? Basically, I've now got my plank of wood that's all been cut. Now, this is basically cut as it is. Obviously, uh, when you cut it straight and you take your time, obviously, sand off. So you check using the engineer square, right, like so. You basically check see if there's no high points, alright, so basically just sand it down. Once you're happy with it, there you go. Alright, so I'll basically now you chop this up. It's all nice and straight, alright. And then you're gonna just check there the lid, alright, there's basically gonna be your lid here. Alright, like so. Now some paper I'm using is 40 grit. It's very coarse, alright, but basically I just want to remove the uh, the material alright a little bit better. 
Right, I've now smoothed off the edges here. Alright, and what else we're going to do now, using the 40 grit sandpaper, I'm just going to quickly chamfer the corners here, each side, like right, so. Right, basically, just put a slight chamfer on there so it's not sharp and all that. Now, I'm even on the edges here and here, basically, put a nice smooth chamfer. Right, so there's no, no sharp bits in there that gets in the way and so forth. Right, even on the bottom as well. Right, and basically you just need a nice smooth chamfer. Right. Right, basically the lid's all it's more or less now where I mean you have a lid here, a slight chamfer here, and a slight chamfer here. Stop shooting all the is in the way, right? So it's nice and smooth. Right? You don't need to do too much. You just need to just make sure it's got a nice lovely chamfered area, right? So it looks nice and professional. And now what we're going to do is we're going to treat the wood, right? We're more or less there, right? Uh, there's no need to mark anything else. Um, the only thing that I am going to mark is on the lid. I remember, remember the markings where the clamps are going to go. I'm basically going to use these marks so that I can line up the hook brackets on the lid, alright, so that I can, uh, once lined up, right, once lined up, using these markings, I can just then mark out where my brackets are going to go, alright. So where my brackets are going to go, alright, so there's a mark in here, alright, so my brackets are going to go here, like so. Now obviously I haven't drawn the, uh, I haven't drawn the, uh, uh, the holes for the, the, the clamps itself, alright, because I need to get the tension. Well basically I'm marking out me, the markings for the top lid, alright, and I do the same for the back. That I've already marked out. The base is going to have uh, four clamps, alright, so it's going to have four clamps at either side, alright, to secure it. Now, my markings, positions for my clamps, where they're going to go, alright. Basically, I'm happy with that, and I'm going to proceed on uh, sanding down. I mean, you should, should check, just check all the way around the wood. See if you've got no sharp bits, alright, nothing sharp. You don't really need sharp hedges as such. You just go around and you check everywhere, you know, for anything that's a bit sharp. Alright, even in the inside, as I mentioned before, you don't want two sharp ends. Alright, even on here, inside of here. I do know that. 
form you need to prep that surface area so it's nice and smooth. Right, on the green. We well, don't need to go too to town, but if you've got wood that's already got paint and all that, then yes, you do need to go to town on it. Clean it off. Alright, even on the inside. Time, right? Alright, after you sanded it, alright, basically what you're going to do is get a damp cloth, alright, and you're basically just going to get rid of all the uh, sawdust particles, alright? Even the table, clean the table up, alright, get rid of these uh, sawdust particles because you don't want these sawdust getting there uh, that's not going to stick to the paint or your, your, your wood stain or whatever you're going to treat it with. So basically, just go around. Clean off the excess sawdust, alright? Very important. Nice damp cloth. Alright. Now, it's so basically going to get rid of all this loose sawdust, alright? At the bottom and so forth. And then once you're finished, alright? Just uh, leave it to dry, alright? Give it about half an hour and it'll be dry. Alright guys, after the wood's dried, the next step now is to put a primer. Now also I'm using a just a just a light grey primer. Alright, it's very crucial that you put a primer. Now you can either wood stain it, alright, so you just wood stain it straight away, alright, and that'll be that'll that'll do. But I want to do mine box is like a coloured box. So basically if you're gonna do it coloured on on wood. I suggest that you get a priming paint for wood. Basically, this is a uh, what I get. All right. So basically, this is a an undercoat for wood paint. Now, uh, a lot of people say, well, why don't you brush paint it? Uh, you can do, but I find that a bit messy. So I prefer to use the uh, the, the kind of uh, spray paint. So always, basically, what I'm going to do now is make sure that your area is prepped up. All right. So you're not going to get it everywhere, all right? And basically what you're going to do is you're going to uh, spray um, the box itself, right? So in this nice, you know, nice dental stroke, right? And just keep doing that, alright, thin coats will do, alright, it's best to put, put thin coats, alright, up and down like so, and about 6 to 8 inches away from the, the work, the work spray, and just keep doing that. Okay guys, whilst you're waiting for your uh, box to dry with the undercoat and all that, um, obviously you've got to make sure that um, you do light coats, do a first coat, half an hour, do a second coat, and so forth until you've got it completely cleared. But um, before we um, start going onto the box and start paint spraying again, basically, whilst to save time and all that and try and get stuff done, is what I've done is as I mark off my, uh, my top lid, basically, I marked off, drilled my holes here, marked them off using these brackets, and you should have. Um, uh, one of your clips like that and so basically they, they don't fit the, the brackets very well so basically what I have to do is I've got to try and countersunk these holes here a little bit so that these screws go a bit flush but obviously I, all I've done is just try just tried it out to show you guys what I'm doing with these clips so basically with these clips now the, the screws here are 3.5 millimeter in uh, in screw in screw di um, diameter and they go into about 20 m20 so obviously carefully drill the holes down to a certain depth right so and also make sure it's it's more or less central between the plank of the wood otherwise if you're not central you could split the wood in half like so 
so make sure you get it central as you can now also the thicker the wood easier it is you now so I'm using um, 16 metric uh, thickness wood but I didn't want to add too much weight because you can get some that thicker and it's really heavy so also I, I want a really good strong um, top lid but obviously not too heavy to carry about so basically what I've done now is just to show you guys as, as I go through that I'll put all the clips in, in place and all that okay I'll use a drill bit and I've got, uh, got the uh, one of these brackets this is one of the brackets it's now being countersunk as you can see the uh, deep recess look into this, the standard ones alright they weren't so basically I've now countersunk them so that, that my screws are now being nice and flush alright I use a 7mm drill bit uh, and I just basically lightly just put a nice little countersunk now obviously I ain't got a proper countersunk ideally it's better with a proper countersunk uh, tip but a good 7mm is, is more than adequate right? and uh, it does the job but make sure you get uh, these secured in the vise and then you can uh, countersunk them right and everyone uh, after uh, a few days I basically put the undercoat two layers of undercoat and I've done two layers of uh, black matte paint over that I've waited around about 12 hours between each coax alright I've done the lid and I've done the entire box from the inside and out and then also I've applied a little bit of varnish as well so it gives it a nice uh, a nice finish as well alright looking really professional basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start fitting the attachments obviously as I'm mentioned before I've already got my holes already drilled well, basically I'm going to fit my attachments and take about five minutes to do okay then uh, I've put all the handles in all right looking the box is looking really professional um, the screws that I use are five uh, countersunk screws obviously they fit flush on the handles I've also um, uh, in installed my little uh, brackets here all right with the screws all nice and flush all right it's looking quite uh, professional now and uh, it's same on the other side I put the handle on that side and I've also got the uh, the brackets on those as well now the next step what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making the the foam inserts obviously the box lid I'll lift it out and then recut the, the foam inserts okay guys the next step is um, basically my box is dried out and uh, basically I've purchased some of this uh, foam now you can get this from a lot of good DIY shops or furniture shops all right and it's basically just a uh, fake foam um, I've got sizes believe it or not bang on 800 millimeters long and around about 500 millimeters in in a uh, width all right so basically this foam is I don't, I don't need to cut do a lot of cutting for foam all right uh, this is 20 millimeter thick all right this is going to be on the sides and uh, and I've also got three big foam inserts all right ones for the end and and also two from the bottom and top all right this is 40 mil thick again same size 800 millimeters in length and 500 basically the first thing I've done is I've got my box and I decided to use the thick foam that the the 40 millimeter thick foam and I basically lined it up just like that okay uh, you see it's looking professional already now the thing is, uh, I was going to get grey foam, but it's very sort of, it's very hard to find. And the thing is, with, uh, with coloured foam, it tends to be a bit expensive. Foam is expensive if you buy it brand new, all right. Uh, but I managed to get this cheap, all right. It's it's not uh, an ideal colour, white. But the thing is, I'm not really bothered what sort of colour it is, because end of the day the foam is going to do the job and protect my scope 
from vibration and damage and whatever and shock. So really, the pur main purpose is if you try and get the foam, you you know get a, f a decent amount of high quality foam. Doesn't really matter what sort of colour, because in the, the day the foam is going to do a lot of the protection for the the telescope. But I managed to get this uh, quite cheap foam uh, of this size. You know, even the 20 mil is not very cheap. All right, this is around about six pounds just for a sheet of 20 mil. All right, and obviously for the 40 mil thick is sort of double the price. So that's the reason why you got to be careful when you're buying foam. Is obviously do your measurements first. All right, think about how you're going, to, what material you're going to use. So you've got to make sure you get the right sort of length because uh, if as soon as you cut this and you make a mistake guess what you're going to waste a bit of money so obviously uh, just bear in mind obviously bear in mind that uh, think about uh, on the form of all your purchases and all. this is expensive stuff I know but um, I'm sure that all online websites where they sell this stuff dead cheap on uh, eBay or something like that alright so keep your eyes open luckily for me I managed to get these quite cheap alright it's costing me about four euros per sheet alright for the small stuff and around about eight euros for the, the thicker stuff I'm going to have the thick one one big thick one that fits the base I'm going to have uh, two 40 mil thickness which will fit on the side like so, alright. But also I need to cut that into shape. And then I'm going to have a uh, 20mm uh, thickness foam on on the sides, like so. And then I'm going to have one big thick uh, foam, alright, which is this one, that's going to basically stick inside the lid here, alright, so it compresses it together, alright. Um, tools you're going to require, as I didn't mention on the beginning, is you're going to need some very sharp Stangler knives because obviously this foam's not very easy to cut. Despite being flexible and all that, you need to have some really sharp knives. And you're going to need a straight edge, something to mark with, and uh, a permanent marker because obviously you can't just use pencil because it just wouldn't work. Alright, so you're going to need, uh, you know your engineer square and you're going to need your your other devices but these are the additional ones you're going to need to cut the form and mark the form all right so you can make your form inserts now it just depends on the, how you want the form to position it really is up to you all right it, it's basically you know you've got to think on how you're going to assemble it now uh, for me I'm going to have one in big entire form at the bottom because um, as it as I fold it in, it's made a nice little shape uh, curve, which will fit snugly for the scope. Right, so I'm having the one insert bottom um, to secure it. I mean, you can use adhesive, but you've got to make sure they use a glue that will stick foam. All right, and stick foam, and also when it dries, you want it to dry transparent as well. Alright, so this kind of glue is what you're sort of after. Alright, it's um, quite a flexible glue. Alright, but uh, this is from, from Patex. Alright, and uh, basically, this just gives uh, a nice transparent flexi glue that will stick foam and all that to to get foam to wood and metal and whatever. Basically, um, I'm hoping to make uh, some of the inserts. Going to, I'm going to stick the adhesive here, either side, so the foam inserts are going to on the side are going to stay permanent. This I'm going to leave uh, unstick. I'm actually going to leave this uh, loose. All right. Um, it just really depends. Really, you can make your foam inserts in a way that you don't even have to put adhesive. All right. The good thing is if you uh, the good thing if you don't stick foam inserts. All right, onto the box you can actually change the foam inserts if they get damaged and all that so there are ways you can do it um, I'm always going to stick mine together but I feel like uh, I don't think it's a good idea so I'm going to leave them loose so that 
if they do become dirty or damaged I can always replace the existing foam all right, with replacement inserts now believe it or not a lot of telescope cases also are not stuck into the box so you can take the foam inserts if they get damaged in any way so you know it just really depends how you're going to lay it out but also I'm going to show you my sort of guide you know you don't have to follow it you know you've probably got better ways to do it all right but the main key factor is make sure you get to the right kind of foam I mean this is just normal packaging foam all right which gives quite good protection and it's quite thick and that's what you're looking for so obviously what I'm going to do now I'm going to go through and I'm going to mark my foam inserts now now it's probably a good idea that um, is to lay your foam, the bottom foam and then place your telescope on top um, so it gives you a good general idea on what uh, foam, you got, foam inserts you're going to use All right. It's looking really nice actually, I'm actually quite impressed that the bottom foam is actually supporting the scope really well with just that foam insert. Now obviously <coughs> I'm going to work out the sizes. Um, I'm going to have two thin side uh, walls of 20mm thick foam which I'm going to use as um, a gauge, my straight edge and it's around about 19mm uh, in width all right, from either side. All right, same for that one, 19 mil. So now I need to cut a 19 mil width across for the foam. All right, and another strip. So I'm using less material but maximising uh, the protection. All right, so I'm going to have two thin walls either side. All right, so now alternatively, if you want to do the lazy way, there's always a lazy way behind it. All right, and you can just basically put the foam itself all right like so keep it reasonably straight all right and then you can just simply just uh, mark out the line across and do it that way all right so basically you just want to make sure you keep it straight as you're marking it so basically get give you some more hand and that'll give you your measurements as well so you can see looking quite good so basically now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out one part of my foam and cut that off. Alright, so nice and easy. Basically I've got to get my foam, I'm going to mark down uh, the, the width, alright, using the straight edge. Alright, uh, make sure you try and get this reasonably straight as you can. Like so, no marks. Now obviously you could have got a straight edge, all I do is just basically line that up all right, to the straight as you can and basically you're going to uh, with your straight edge you're going to mark out what your 19 centimeter line okay take your time all right when you when you're doing stuff like that just take your time all right you don't want to make mistakes Alright, so this gives me uh, an insert here. Alright, now you don't need to put a, a big, you know, big sort of like. Get yourself one of these, which is your standing light. Get your standing light knife, okay. Basically, on a hard surface, preferably uh, a surface that you don't mind uh, damaging, alright, don't do it on your best table. Alright, but basically you're going to line up the straight edge and you're going to carefully, and I mean carefully, cut along that straight line. I'm going to show you the technique now of how to cut this foam. Alright, it's going to be very tricky to do. Alright, but basically what I've done, I'll mark out my, uh, my insert, so one of the rolls. And basically I'm going to show you how you cut this. Now obviously this is a 20 millimeter thick uh, foam, so you line it up against the line using your straight edge. And basically what you're trying to do is once you get to, once you get it all lined up, alright, you basically compress, compress the straight edge against the foam, alright, and then using a very, very, very sharp standard blade, you compress it against and then starting 
from the line you lined it up at the edge slowly cut across like so all right nice and easy basically don't worry if you haven't cut all the way across all right from the other side cleanly just just do it again nice and slowly and then you just keep going maintain the pressure just keep cutting across like so all right like so basically you get a nice cut all the way across the foam all right so you're not going to get tears and wears and all that now if you start getting tears and wears it might you know and you start getting blunt edges it's also a sign that your um your, your stanley blade is not sharp enough all right so just make sure you can get that cut, that firm tightness across all right and just keep cutting across like so all right nice and easy again still maintain the pressure carefully make sure you don't cut your fingers alright because this can be uh, can ruin your day alright just keep going along with maintain that pressure All right. again compress the uh, straight edge and there you go Basically now you've got, uh, you may get a few blunt edges, all right, but you can always trim them off, like so. But basically you've now got a nice straight cut across, all right, so it looks more professional. All right, so that's basically how you cut the foam. Now obviously the thicker the foam, the worse it's going to be, all right. So it probably is an idea is once you cut one side, obviously make sure before you cut anything, is mark um, that line across, all right, from either side, all right. So you can do it bit by bit and then transfer it there. Obviously, we'll see how I get on, all right. But basically, this is my foam now, so nice and cut. A lot less trimming to uh, um, do, all right. Otherwise, you don't want to get all these strands on that. So obviously, use a very very sharp Stanley blade. Use a high quality one as well, because obviously that also pays dividends. Alright, so it's just an idea to show you guys how you cut this foam. Alright, it is tricky, but take your time, plenty of practice and all that. Obviously, my first practice wasn't as great, alright, but now I'm getting good at it now, and now I'm able to cut this foam nice and straight. Okay, basically, I've done my side walls, alright, I've, I've cut them in, in, in two, alright, and they fit perfectly. Just one thing I need to add is um, for the thicker stuff I've cut my piece as it is now all right but basically what I'm going to do is it depends on how you want to insert your uh, foam but basically I've blow, put my uh, my floor one here and basically I'm going to I've marked, up, marked out a, um, a little gap here so basically I'm going to have like a little T sort of section for the ends all right so basically once uh, once I've managed to uh, mark those areas out with a straight edge and all that, basically um, I just want to cut a s bit by bit of the material, not too much, so that the, the, the foam insert is flopping inside, right? You don't want to have the, the foam inserts just moving about, right? You want them sort of compact but rigid, right? So basically, just something to add here, right? Just when you consider putting your foam lining is make sure you get your foam line prepped up for you all right so as best as you can all right and once it's all lined up all right and then you can start filling in the the bits okay I cut the the, uh, the actual ends really down now all right and basically I'm now fitting it in all right it's a nice tight fit all right and Okay, you're going to get some gaps in there, all right, because, of the, because obviously the more you cut the material, the more, you know, difficult it can be. And basically that's what you're after, nice and flush with the, the case, all right, and that's one of the ends, all right. So basically now you've got to do the exact same to the other side. All right, everyone, this is my foam lining now made, all right, as you can see. Uh, it slightly overlaps, but that's what you want because uh, 
basically um, for expansion during you know cold winter months or summer months you want that material to be snugly fit it's flexible all right it does overlap all right I'm a, but the thing is I've not actually used any adhesive all right to uh, to make me to make me lining so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place the telescope in here and just check around check and check your uh, your lining see if it fits all right all right and just give it a good good check all right uh, and as you can see look at that see how it fits it's really snugly and that, that's basically what you want all right nice and nice and uh, snug fit really professionally done now ideally you could use uh, adhesive all right so you can uh, glue it together it's up to you but any day what you're thinking about is if the foam does wear out after time all right um, you might need to replace the parts all right you might need to replace that section or this section because it's worn all right so just think about how you make your foam insert now obviously it's almost there all right and basically i'm going to put another foam insert on here unfortunately I do actually have to uh, glue it onto the lid, all right. But the thing is, you, know, you can see how how good, how snugly fit it is, right? Right, even to the cap and to the thing. So it's nice and solid in there, all right. Lovely snug fit, all right. Basically, I'm going to make the the top top half, all right. Basically, that's going to compress um, the rest of the scope down like so. All right, and fire uh, sticking this onto the, the right. lid. This is going to be the uh, top lid uh, sponge. Also, I'm using the 40 millimeter thick sponge. All right, I've measured across uh, 700 millimeters across this line here. All right, and 32 centimeters lip width ways. Basically, I've measured it so that it between each of the uh, the foam inserts either side right um, I don't want to overlap basically I want this pad to compress so obviously when you put the lid on all right, it's going to fit flush all right but the sponge will compress the uh, this telescope tube to a certain amount now obviously I don't want too much also I'm gonna affect the size of the walls of the, the sponge itself all right so the foam inserts so basically I want them as straight as possible and also the top lid to not to uh, interfere with the other inserts all right so it's, it fits nice and flush all right nowhere and so the lid will fit shut properly okay i've now cut me uh, my top lid uh, foam insert basically what i'm going to do now is measure across so that when i stick the the foam onto the lid all right it's going to be evenly spaced and it'll fit for snugly so basically just do a rough guesstimate also measuring that is 70 uh, and 70 across that way as well okay and then either side okay um, I've got down as 45 45 so basically with those dimensions you mark out the 70 across there a certain across there and then 45 and 45 in the middle so it gives you sort of where to place this sponge all right so you're not going to uh, trap any of the foam in there all right so when you stick it on with adhesive all right when it comes to when it dries you put it back on there and it should fit okay I've got my foam insert lined up as I mentioned before 70 here 70 across here like so and then your 245s right basically once you've got a rough dimension all right you basically now need to mark out basically need to mark out with some kind of uh, marker pen all right and you just mark that there like so on each corner all right so it gives you your position i've marked my areas here all right 
Um, now I'm away a position where I'm going to place my uh, my pad, my foam pad. Um, another quick tip is um, if your cutting didn't go according to plan, all right, you can smooth it down using a bit of sandpaper. Make sure you you wear your goggles. Or, or any dust protection because you don't want to breathe in this foam because it's quite fine and you basically just basically sand across like so right so you get a nice even uh, cut right so get, it, I know it's jagged but it does help and it does smooth out the edges alright so that's a little quick tip you could do right basically what we're going to do now is Right. Get off all the dust out, like so. Right, and then basically what you're going to do is you're going to uh, apply using this Patex glue. Now, obviously, you just needs to find out what sort of glue you're going to use. All right, but this is this would this will glue and bond a foam. All right, so basically, it's a contact glue. And what you're going to do is you're going to uh, get your piece of foam that you've just cut out. All right. Give it a good, give it a good quick brush. All right. It's not absolutely crucial that, it, that your contact has to be spot on. All right. Well, basically what you're going to do is if you want to position your uh, your glue. Right. Basically, apply some of this. All right, like so. Like so. Okay. Then what you're gonna do? Put the glue together. Put the glue, and then you're going to position where your markings are. Like so. Okay, all right. Basically, now that is my padding place. Get yourself a piece of wood, all right, like so. All right. Carefully, not to nudge the where you've just put your pad. Play it out with the wood compact. Get yourself some counterweights, all right. And position the counterweights like so. So these are your existing counterweights from your telescope. And basically that will do apply the pressure onto that adhesive. Alright. So the adhesive will take around about 15 minutes to dry. Alright. This is going to provide the compression of your uh, pad. So make sure that it'll stay in place like so. It will keep keep contact to the adhesive to the board. Right, and keeps it secure. All right, so leave that for a good hour or so. Once it's settled, then you can lift it out and then check. Okay, I waited an hour. All right, and li lifted the the counterweights and the wood. All right, and uh, the glue is now sorted out. Okay, and then what are you gonna do now? Once you you sand it down and you clean it up as you can. I'm just going to put uh, the lid on there, like so. Now, obviously, it's not going to fit perfectly. It fits now, but because there's this, the tube in there, basically, now because this foam is quite thick, alright. Um, Basically, I need to like compress it. Now that's when uh, these uh, brackets come in handy. Now, all right. So you see, it's all lined up. All right, come out either way for it. All right, even this way. Okay, like so. All right, because it's under tension. All right, with a foam, I have to set my clips now. So basically, I need to align my my holes, alright, from the brackets and clips. Alright, time for the tricky bit now. Basically, I've got my lid, and what I've done, I have put my uh, 
my clips in now, on right, either side. What am I going to do is, because it's under spring tension because of the, the foam, I need to compress it together so that I want those clips. So when they do clip on, clip on they'll clip on properly, all right, and keep and retain the top lid. All right, so you don't want it too loose, otherwise the clips will not clamp together, all right, and the lid will just not hold and may come off, which you don't want. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm carefully, with these clips hanging loose, I'm going to compress this lid, all right, to amount of tension, okay. And what I'm doing is that I'm marking from the top, to the top of here, so I've got my mark there, and the mark here, and then I do the same on the other side. That will give me the positions of those clips. All right. Basically, I've marked just a line on the top of the clip here, all right? So that's why I marked just the line. That gives me this correct sort of tension I'm going to need for those top lids. Then I take the clips out, I take off the lid, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to where I've marked the line for the tension, all right? With this clip, I line up to that line, like so, and I put a mark there and mark here between the holes. All right. So basically I've got my, my holes there, do the same again, line up the clips. here and here, All right, so I've got two holes here, I want to tip round, as you can see, same again, copy clips, locate the line, So here and here, okay, another clip, line up that line, like so, okay, so basically now I've got my holes lined up, now what I'm going to do, with the holes drilled, right, with the holes drilled, I'm now going to um, drill the existing holes using a 1.5 mil diameter drill bit. Carefully, not all the way in, all right, so you don't want to damage the And then what you do, you do this exactly the same on the other side. After you drill out the holes of the box, right, you carefully get your lid, like so, alright, cover it up, make sure it's all lined up. Okay. Then you're gonna get your clips. You can get your clips here. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to put on um, put on the screws. Basically you're going to put on your screws. All right, where the holes are drilled. All right, get your Phillips screwdriver and using 
Um, 3.5 diameter wood screws, all right, around about 16mm uh, long, okay, the Phillips, and you're going to screw on the brackets, like so. So I'll feed it in first, and then carefully. Now, I always have a drill at 1.5 diameter, so the screws will bite in there. All right, and it's quite tight, but that's exactly what I want it. All right, reasonably tight. Okay. Keep put, keep putting all the screws in place, like so. Now the best bit. Once your latches have uh, secured. Basically now you're going to test the clampness. So you line them up like so, either end, right? And then basically you want them so that they will clamp together, like that. A nice little audible clamp, right? There you go. So that's basically clamps in place, alright, and properly lined up, alright, so basically you should be able to take your time, if they don't clamp, don't risk it for a biscuit, alright, but test it, as you can see, it's now properly secured my lid, alright, so I can actually lift it on its side like so, alright, right. and that's basically my box line done. Okay, and as you can see, alright, you know, you take off the clips, alright, okay, and then have a look, and there you go. You know, nice, snugly. It, it's 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 all secured. All right. The telescope's quite protected. So you see, uh, just just the right sort of room. All right for the folks uh, and all that. Okay, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed this guide, uh, this DIY guide. I hope you've got a few ideas swinging to your heads and gives you an incentive to build your own telescope case. Now bear in mind this is only for the quattro, 8 inch uh, quattro, the spiral tree reflectors. Um, if you're doing the 200p, it will fit that, but the box needs to be a little bit longer. All right, I don't know exactly the tube length, but I'm guessing it's probably 900 millimeters or more. All right, but I hope you've gathered a lot of useful information from this guide. All right, uh, please feel free to answer any questions. All right, um, conclusion. Now the conclusion of this box, right? Um, apart from, I've not completely finished yet, but apart from a few things, like right, I'm going to put some metal corners at either end to protect the, the wood from the edges, and I'm also going to fit at the bottom here, right? I'm going to fit some wheels, some trolley wheels. And basically, with one trolley wheels at this side, I can then lift the case up from the handle and basically build the carry it off like a suitcase. Alright, so that's say once you design a box, there is no limit to what you can do, alright, to make it better. Now obviously this box is quite manageable, alright, you can lift it up with a two-man lift, alright, two-person lift, if you want comfortable, or if you're a bit strong, you can lift it yourself, alright, you can still bit there, but I think it weighs around about 15 to 16 kilos. This can fit into almost any car now. Um, even the Golf Mark 4, this was quite a play go in the back uh, without any problems. All right, um, and you see, see for yourself, uh, I'm not amazing things you can achieve just using a few sets of tools, get some material and all that, and do a bit of math work. All right, and this is what we can get. I have, however, and I'll be honest with you, I have spent over the bid, my, my existing target budget was 50 to 60 euros. But bear in mind, I spent around about 90 or 95 euros around that mark. 
it's a little bit more but it's down slightly better than the 468 euros that was quoted for more of the cases that I mentioned that does fit this scope. This will now will last for years and years upon years. It's taken five days or six days or so to try and complete it, or almost complete it. Alright, but you see now I can now use it as you know, it's supposed to be. Alright, I can take it to a remote or dark site without risk damaging the turret scope. Alright, it's well protected. Alright, and it has been a long one. Alright, but uh, for you guys out there, alright, obviously I'm going to have well deserved uh, beer, okay, so for you guys out there, alright, I know the new year's coming up, so to you guys, happy new year, obviously you have a beer on that, and as I was saying before, anyone can make one of these, it just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort to, to, to do something, alright, you know, you can do a lot of things. Fair lines, do a bit of careful planning, it will go far. Right, so make sure you take the time, do a bit of careful planning, and you can achieve some amazing results. Please feel free to share the, you know, share this uh, idea with a lot of people. Right, and uh, thanks for watching out my guide. And uh, once again, please guys, and uh, goodbye. Okay, uh, this is a later version of my box. I've now uh, compl fully completed it. I'm just here to show you um, a little bit more what I've done to this box. Obviously, I've gone over my budget as I uh, was estimated, but for still paying around about 190 euros to complete the box, still cheaper than buying a uh, and an existing case that costs twice as more. Uh, as you notice, there's, if we take a closer look, is that I've to protect the lid and the corners of the box and reinforce it just that little bit more. I've installed uh, some aluminium strips, wear strips, and these are just uh, at, at right angle uh, strips that are 20 millimeter either side and what I've done is I just use screws countersunk them and sort of made it so that they'll screw onto the, the onto the the wood itself and what that does is it will protect uh, the corners from wood damage and all that if the case gets hit uh, I've done it on the bottom so it doesn't wear at the bottom strips as well but, well around about 20 or 30 euros uh, to complete uh, with all the screws and all that um, as you can see the nice finish and all that really makes a, a massive difference to the box and it looks really professional in fact to be honest it looks that good you know you, it looks like um, a proper case anyway that you get for most telescopes so it's really really good uh, quality um, also to add to the equation now the box is quite heavy now but the way I've done it is that the box can be easily transportable and I basically installed uh, some heavy duty uh, 40 kilogram uh, trolley wheels uh, I've done it in such a way that it's off the ground so basically when I uh, basically this this is just a, a bracket uh, with the wheels um, these are high, uh, high uh, uh, strength Allen bolts, and these bolts actually screw through uh, into the box itself, and then it's held in with another uh, nuts and washers. But where I've done it is that uh, the sponge will protect it, uh, the telescope, so it stops these uh, ends from protruding through and damaging the scope. But these are very uh, high strength. And they are not going anywhere. And basically, I've installed these uh, little trolley wheels. They only cost around about five, maybe six euros each. And uh, as you see, is when I come to lift it up from the other end, 
I can now push it along just like that so it's really really uh, good and very handy feature and as you can see now that's my completed box uh, please feel free to comment on this box and and any other questions regarding if you want to make the box yourself but as you can see from this from this it's quite impressed what I've done with this box and I've, and I've come a long way but uh, I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching this guide and uh, thanks for uh, thanks for watching and clear skies.